Counter steering is the first skill that people misunderstand about motorcycling. If you're coming from the perspective of a car driver, you might think that in order to steer a bike, you would turn the handlebars in the direction you want to go. And while this remains true at very slow parking lot speeds, it is in fact the opposite when riding down the road. Counter steering is the fundamental technique that must be used by a motorcyclist to initiate turns at higher speed. When you want to turn, you're going to want to apply a slight pressure to the handlebar in the opposite direction of the intended turn. For example, to initiate a right turn, the rider momentarily pushes the right handlebar bars forward. This is seemingly counterintuitive, right? Well, maybe that's where they got the name, huh? This action causes the motorcycle's front wheel to turn slightly in the opposite direction of the intended turn. As a result, the motorcycle leans in the direction of the turn. This lean is crucial for turning as it allows the motorcycle to change direction while maintaining stability. And it's the best part about riding, just dipping it into corners. It feels great. The physics behind counter steering is based on the gyroscopic forces of the motorcycle's wheels and the bike's forward momentum. When the rider counter steers, the front wheel's contact patch briefly moves out from under the bike's center of mass. This causes the bike to lean in the direction of the turn, initiating the desired change in direction. Bicycles work the same way, and you can see when you look at the front of a bike when they turn, it kind of dips to one side, then over to the other side that you actually want to turn. Once a motorcycle is leaned over, the rider can steer in the direction of the turn to maintain the arc. At lower speeds, counter steering is less noticeable, and riders typically rely more on direct steering inputs to initiate turns. However, at higher speeds, counter steering becomes more pronounced and is a key technique for effectively maneuvering a motorcycle through curves and corners. And while this may seem complicated in theory, luckily it feels rather intuitive while actually doing it. Counter steering in conjunction with leaning your body is an incredibly fluid and enjoyable aspect of motorcycling. It's a really easy skill to practice too. Even if you're going just 20 miles an hour on a quiet residential road, you can push your handlebar in each direction and feel the way the bike reacts and behaves. And before you know it, you're gonna be cornering like Lord Rossi himself. There's there's also a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to braking. For some reason, people got it in their head that relying on the front brake is unsafe, and a majority of your braking should be done at the rear wheel. Maybe as children, everyone locked up their front tire on their mongoose bicycles too many times, and it rewired your brain into being fearful of the front brake. But in reality, it's the exact opposite. The front brake is your friend and the source of the majority of your stopping power on a motorcycle, typically around 70 to 90 percent, especially at higher speeds. The rear brake contributes to the remaining 10 to 30 percent and also helps stabilize the motorcycle during braking. When initiating braking, it's crucial to apply the brakes progressively. Squeeze the brake lever smoothly, gradually increasing the pressure. Using your fingers to grip the front brakes lever enhances control and modulation, allowing you to apply the brakes more effectively. Just one of the many reasons why an aftermarket shorty lever are indicative of a squid. Long levers give you leverage. It's a nice thing. Threshold braking is the technique of applying the maximum braking force just before the wheels lock up. It's important to practice this in a safe environment to develop a feel for the threshold point, which can vary depending on the road surface and condition. To avoid locking up the wheels, apply both brakes smoothly and progressively, avoiding sudden or jerky movements. While the front brake provides more stopping power, it's important to use more front brake than rear brake to prevent the rear wheel from lifting off the ground. But if you do that, you're pulling a cool stoppy. In emergency braking situations, apply both brakes firmly but smoothly, but most modern bikes are coming equipped with ABS too, which are gonna prevent your front wheels from locking up under heavy braking anyways. And while ABS shouldn't be relied on too heavily, it should probably quell whatever concerns you have about using your front brake. Of course, the best way to develop these good habits is to practice, because regular practice of emergency braking in a safe, controlled environment develops your muscle memory and improves your reaction times. I think the front brake myth came from Harley riders because of the geometry of the bikes. They just think that stamping on the rear brake is the way to stop, but Harley guys, use your front brakes. It works. It's also common for people to misunderstand how and when to shift gears on a motorcycle. If you've ever driven a manual transmission in a car, you may be used to a car engine which produces torque early on in the rev range. This allows you to shift relatively low in the revs to drive conservatively and increase fuel efficiency. And if you've only ever driven in an automatic, you might not have even paid attention as to how and when the car is shifting gears. Shifting gears on a motorcycle can be foreign to car drivers. The small high revving engines found in most motorcycles encourage you to rev the engine way past to the higher RPMs. In most cases, a motorcycle will benefit from higher revs. They're designed to do that. If your bike has a 10,000 RPM red line, what good will shifting at 2,500 RPM do you other than bore you to tears? Like I said, a motorcycle engine is designed to be revved out, you'll continue to make a lot more power and your bike might even run a little bit better. I mean, there is the whole myth of the Italian tune-up, which refers to running your bike or car to redline a few times to burn up any carbon deposits. I'm not a mechanic, nor am I Italian, but the idea checks out for me. 
I think it was Ryan from Fortnite that said, you paid for the whole tachometer, use it. But like any good segment in a list video, there's always an exception to every rule. Certain bikes, say big over square V-twins with long strokes, do make peak torque at the bottom of the rev range and often provide a more enjoyable riding experience by shifting early. But for most other motorcycles you'll find, it's not gonna hurt anything by revving the ending out a little further instead of shifting super early on like you're in a Prius in eco mode. We often say stick to the meat of the power band, and that's usually between 50 to 60% of your total rev range. So if you're on an R6 that redlines at 16,000 RPM, shifting somewhere around 9 or 10,000 RPM for a normal street riding should do you just fine. But of course, squeeze the throttle all the way to redline for a very exciting time. Many new riders struggle to understand the importance of sight when riding a motorcycle. Of course, you must see ahead of you. You gotta gauge your following distance, your entry speed, and to keep an eye out for encroaching vehicles or other hazards. But your eyes don't just look out for potential obstacles, they also instinctually tell your bike where to go. One of the great phenomena of motorcycling is the way in which your body and subsequently the motorcycle almost always naturally follow the path of what it is you're looking at. This could easily be explained somehow, but I just don't know the reason for it. Even if you're riding on a perfectly straight road and seemingly applying no input to the handlebar, if you look over and see some cows in a field, by the time you're able to say, hey look, cows, you're gonna be going damn near driving the edge of the road. Obviously, some bigger, heavier bikes will be better about going straight even if you're looking around you, but on most bikes, all it takes is your eyes wandering around to completely change the direction in which you're traveling. All that being said, it's really important to look where you wanna go. This is exponentially important when you're cornering. It's a hard habit to break as a new rider and the obsessive desires to look directly in front of your bike or to fixated obstacles you're trying to avoid. But new riders will commonly look at the edge of the road while turning, not realizing that by trying to avoid it, they're actually making it that much harder to complete the turn. That's why you always want to look through the exit. By looking at the exit, your body and bike will instinctually move toward it, making it easier to steer your bike through the turn to the exit. Look, I know it's banana yellow to you, but Suzuki calls this color on the GSX-8R Pearl Ignite Yellow. It's actually very pretty in person, and you will get loads of looks while you're riding it, because guess what? I am giving this bike away to a lucky member in the audience. I've given away over 51 motorcycles valued at over $500,000 in the last five years. It's been the coolest part about running this channel and we just keep doing cool bikes all the time. Head over to yamnew.co and pick out a t-shirt, a hat, a hoodie, whatever you'd like and every dollar you spent on the store will be an entry to win the bike and who knows, we might even have a sweet multiplier going on right now. So head over to the store, check it out and don't miss it. Since we're on the topic of cornering, people misunderstand the way your speed plays into safety in a turn. While of course, flying through a corner at too high of a speed will make it impossible possible to complete the turn without going wide and riding off the road, but carrying an appropriate amount of speed through a turn actually has a lot of advantages compared to braking or decelerating. The application of brakes or throttle during a turn is also something that's significantly different on a bike than when driving a car. When driving a car where balance and stability are of little concern, it's not uncommon for people to be off on the gas, coasting into a turn with their brakes engaged, while trail braking is a more advanced riding technique that involves carrying the brakes into a turn, for a new rider who's just trying to make sense of things, it's important to complete a turn with consistent and smooth throttle input. A motorcycle is more stable when it's moving at a constant speed or accelerating than it is when it's decelerating. That's because the forces acting on the bike, such as centrifugal force, are more balanced when the bike is in motion. Decelerating too much can unsettle the bike and reduce stability. Traction control is crucial for maintaining control of the motorcycle, especially when cornering. When you use your brakes in a corner, you shift weight forward onto the front wheel, which can reduce traction on the rear wheel. Carrying speed through a turn allows you to control your line and maneuver the bike more effectively. You you can use throttle control and body positioning to adjust your trajectory through a turn, making it smoother and more controlled. But the big takeaway is don't coast or decelerate during a turn. You should be mindful of your entry speed leading into a corner and apply smooth and consistent throttle while you look through the turn, counter steer to initiate your lean on a bike, and ride on through the sunset. But again, the bike will work best as you trail brake into the corner. You're loading the front end and working the bike the way it's meant to be worked. Many people also struggle to understand the proper posture when riding a motorcycle. Again, unlike driving a car, riding a motorcycle is basically a whole body experience. And the way in which you position yourself on the bike directly correlates to how you control the bike and how it's gonna behave underneath you. The ergonomic package, that's the correlation of the handlebar, the seat, the foot pegs, and some other things relative to one another, will of course vary across different
specific models, but the fundamental ideas should be similar. So unless you're on a cruiser, but in that case, your body position doesn't matter all that much anyways. When riding a motorcycle, your back should be straight. You're gonna wanna avoid slouching. Again, you can ignore this if you ride a Harley Davidson as the average Harley rider slouches worse than a PC gamer with scoliosis. Bend your arms slightly at the elbows. Keep your elbows chill and relaxed. This allows for better control and flexibility in steering the bike. You should probably use your knees to control the grips on the side of the fuel tank lightly. That's gonna help you maintain stability and control, especially during braking and cornering. Be on the balls of your feet on the foot pegs. This prevents you from accidentally dragging the brake or knocking the shift lever and keeps your toes out of the way when leaning the bike over. Being on the balls of your feet provides a little bit more mobility and a little bit more of an athletic stance on the bike as well, making it easier to move around a bit in the saddle should you need to adjust your body positioning during a turn. And lastly, try to keep your body relaxed and loose while riding. Tensing up can make it harder to control the motorcycle and can lead to fatigue. Everybody is different, so move around a bit on your bike and see what's most comfortable, but these general guidelines will keep you in the right direction to get your ideal body position on the bike. And the last thing most people misunderstand about riding motorcycles is what it's like riding in the rain. If you want to know all the nitty gritty details about riding a motorcycle in the rain, we actually just released a whole video going over wet weather in detail, so go back and check that one out. But the gist of it is, the conclusion made in that long form video, is that riding in the rain is actually not really a big deal at all, if you're prepared and have a strong set of fundamentals. Of course, without proper rain gear, you get wet, which sucks, but otherwise riding in the rain just forces you to exercise the skills you already have been mastering anyways. There are a bunch of little things that you may be able to get away with when riding on dry pavement that can lead to a crash when riding in the rain. We always want to have smooth and gradual throttle control and braking no matter where we're riding, but riding in the rain makes it that much more important as there is an elevated risk of losing traction in wet conditions. Similarly, when riding on dry pavement, you may be able to push the limits of your worn out tires despite knowing that they're overdue for replacement. But worn out tires in the rain without proper tread death to disperse water from the contact patch can have really bad outcomes. So as long as you make sure your tires are in proper order and your riding skills are up to snuff, riding in the rain is totally manageable and something every rider is going to be forced to experience sooner or later. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to subscribe to get more informative motorcycle content. Head over to yamnew.co to learn how you can get entered to win that Suzuki GSX 8R or other future giveaway motorcycles. I'm going to catch you guys later. Fact. Allodoxophobia is the fear of other people's opinions. And for those of you who've made it all the way to the end of the video, you might have known that that's a fact we put in another video. Goodbye. You've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. As a treat for you, I will clue you into the best way to support the show. And it's by going over to yammynoob.co and signing up to win this GSX 8R. It's not for very long, time is running out to win it, so make sure you head over to the website and go and check it out. But in the meantime, you can watch this next video right over here and keep indulging in some sweet, sweet squid content.